All right. And look at all these beautiful faces. Genevieve Gainyard, a bunch of people I reckon. Oh my gosh. You know, I feel like we're all virtual besties at this point. We have Is that Raylan OMG. Sorry. Right? <laughs> Yay. I love it. I love it. I miss her a lot. Okay. Same <laughs> Well, it is five o'clock and it is Wednesday and we're back here. Uh, I'm Erica Wall, the director of the Berkshire Cultural Resource Center here at the Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts. And we are excited as we always are um, to have Genevieve Gainyard, our artist in residence here. And this is the third of a three part series of conversations that we've been having with Genevieve, uh, just talking to her about first, the origin of her story, her career. And then we talked a little bit about her practice last week and we are gonna end the series with learning a little bit about how she's navigated so very well the LA art scene. So, hey, I see lots of people. I know, not those here. <laughs> okay, so I, I digress, I do that often. Okay, so I'm just going to lay down how we've been doing it for the past two weeks, and we'll do it the same way today. We have Veronica Preciado, who is our gallery manager, waving there. And Veronica will be taking questions. I know a lot of you submitted questions with your registration, so I'm going to try and get those in as well. But if there is at some point you have a question, feel free to send a message through chat to Veronica and she will let us know, and either you are welcome to ask the question, or Veronica will ask it for you. Um, and that's just basically how it goes. So as I said, today we are talking with Genevieve about her navigation of the LA art scene. Um, Genevieve, were you planning on sharing some images with us first? Yeah, I was gonna show some images, but you know, you could also, um, ask me some things <laughs> of course i can't control my family's house phone ringing that's okay it makes it more personal i really need to stop this for a second <laughs> talk amongst yourselves see that's why this is so great y'all this is this is what it's all about this is real here she's back here she's back the real, the real world it is real oh my goodness it is real Okay, I got so the you're going to share, seven. and I think what Jebby was saying, if there are questions that people have when images come up, feel free to ask too, because we can talk about those. Yeah. Um, but we'll, we're going to try and spend as much time, I'd like to answer as many questions as possible and get into the conversation with, with everyone, because that's always the, the good part too. But um, yeah, Genevieve, start us off. It's not letting me, but I will do as soon as you let me. Okay, then. Um, I might start, I know this has been a, a question that came up quite a few times. We, we titled the, the session, How You Navigated the LA Art Scene. So do you want to share with us, you know, why you decided to head out west versus being on the East Coast and maybe trying New York out? Sure. So, um, you know, Forgive me if you've heard some of these stories before, but um, just to give you like a full understanding, um, I never dreamed of living in LA or anything like that, but I also never really dreamed of living in New York either. Um, I was kind of always terrified of like the hustle and bustle of New York. Um, and I, you know, I had to go down there during grad school for classes and of course I, you know, for museum trips and whatnot, but um, I'd always just kind of go there for the thing and get out as soon as I could. <laughs> um, so oddly enough, I ended up in LA basically just because um, the thesis show of my class traveled from New York to Los Angeles. I had to go there in order to um, install my work. And so while I was there, it turned out that I had rel a relative there who hosted me for an entire month, which was really nice. Um, so making connections with someone there. Um, I, um, I have a nephew that, you know, talked to me about moving out to LA and I was like, why don't you just come and see the place first? Because that was kind of how I decided like this kind of makes 
sense for me. Um, so that was great having someone that I could kind of be hosted by and um, just kind of get a lay of the land. I wasn't even staying there for a month with the sense of moving there even, um, mm -hmm. but just as a new adventure. Um, and so it, it was that. And by the end of that month that I was there, um, I would say like the last week I was on Craigslist looking for um, possible, hey Aaron, um, possible apartments and um, yeah, moved in with this couple that had three cats. There's the cat reference in my work again, maybe. Um, <laughs> and it just kind of, um, be that became the next move. It, it was, it was kind of like a flash of realization if I stayed in my hometown after going through all that hard work of grad school. Um, I felt like I would easily have wasted that time and just kind of fell back into um, kind of just survival mode in my hometown. And I probably would have just started working at the store again and the country store and just like, you know, that, that wouldn't have been awful. And I kind of gave myself a year to figure it out. And I, I just decided like, if it doesn't work, at least I tried it, you know, right. and no one's going to knock me for not, you know, making an attempt, you know? Right. So when you, when you got to LA or when you, okay, so obviously the priority was finding a place to live, but when you started to think about, okay, I'm moving here, what was, what was the, the list of priorities after you got there? You know, was it, I want to start showing, I want to find representation, I need to find other artists and like, what was, what was going through your mind and how did you sequence it? I think it was more just like, this is a crazy new place and I have a lot to figure out. And I still, I've lived there for five years and I still don't know a lot about it, you know? <laughs> um, it has its way of um, cradling you in its little pockets. And if you find your pocket, like you could just be good there, you know? Right. Um, but I think, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned last session, but a good amount of my classmates that were in the photo program were either originally from LA, so they were moving back, or they were taking the leap and not moving to New York. So, right. um, so I was fortunate enough to have folks, you know, that I knew that were still also feeling like either they knew the place and they were willing to show, you know, show us that didn't know the place around. Um, or there was people that I could call and be like, hey, let's go explore today, you know? Right, right. So the network part was already there and- It was how like did, built in. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, did, how did it expand for you beyond, the, beyond your classmates? And because you talked a little bit about in your previous sessions, how you would, you know, go to gallery openings or start to think about, you know, which I, which I love so much is how you explained that this was, you knew this was part of the process of getting known and making, you know, acquainting yourself with the, with the landscape, but that you were not the sort of person that would go up to someone and start a conversation. So you used your shoes you had made, or you, you did something to make yourself noticed and start the conversation and how did that you know how did that expand and work for you um or expand your network and work for you by doing that yeah so a huge part was that that opening at um diane rosenstein gallery where we had our thesis show okay um you know i i again, I, like there's a balance. Like if I'm going to someone else's show, I'm less likely to go up to people and say, Hey, this is me. But if it's a show that I'm part of, then it, it leads you to like introduce yourself to people, talk about the work. It gives you that kind of um, safety net. If you feel comfortable talking about your work with others, you know? And right. um, so I kind of was able to, 
connect with folks even through that opening. Mm -hmm. um, folks that even if I didn't follow up with, they followed up with me. Um, and so, um, you know, someone I've maybe mentioned in the past is Danny First. He was, he's a collector, um, an artist and has a residency um, in LA. And so he was someone that kind of took me under his wing in the sense of either saying like, hey, there's a show and you know, he's, he's really connected. He, he's, been, he's lived there for a long time. He, he knows, he's just tapped into the art world there. And so um, he was a huge player in that for me. I also mentioned my friend, Ray Anthony Barrett, who was like my first art friend turned chef. Um, <laughs> and we kind of had opposite <laughs> paths, but he was also a great person that kind of led me around. Um, and it was cool too, cause he had a studio space. So it gave me a sense to just like, oh, this is, this is an artist working in LA. And um, you know, his space happened to have, you know, several other artists. So I met, you know, it was kind of like a chain reaction. Um, if I went out or hung out with Ray, then I would get more connected to other artists in the scene. And then if I hung out with Danny, he would introduce me to collectors and galleries and stuff like that. So you know, and it's not like I was remembering all of these things, right. but you know, you see people in these spaces once and then you just start to remember them. And, you know, so you start to, um, you know, feel like you can start to really engage with people. Um, so right. that, that was kind of how the networking expanded early on. So it sounds like when you thought about it, it was really just about establishing like an understanding of where you were, who who was there, how it how it all works versus I gotta get representation, I have to sell my work, I have to, you know, kind of you had this idea of, okay, let me just understand how this works. Um, so I think that's important to think about that, you know, it's not just a sprint to make sure that, you know, everybody knows you are, you're selling work, but that there is a certain, you know. Yeah, I think there's um, also, there's also these kind of unspoken things that happen um, with artists and galleries, at least, you know, that I can kind of think back and reference that I didn't have an understanding of what it meant to show at a gallery. I didn't understand, um, you know, contracts and whatnot or, um, you know, so I remember the the first gallery I showed at it was like oh so you you want to be repped by a gallery and I'm just like oh that must mean I'm repped by a gallery just because like it was I don't know and I don't think she was like trying to like be unclear but I just did not know the lingo then so I was just like oh this must mean I'm repped by a gallery <laughs> but then I was like but I'm never getting a show what's happening you know right. um but then Danny kind of swooped in there too and teamed up with her. I didn't do Danny's residency because I lived in LA. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know, I think maybe a year in, maybe a little less, I, through the connection of Ray, he introduced me to another artist who was, you know, leaving their studio for a while and needed someone to kind of fill in their spot. Mm -hmm. Um, so that became like a cheaper way. I mean, not cheap to me at the time because I didn't have any money, but, um, you know, I think it was like around three or $400, but I was like sharing with a space with a, another person. Plus the girl who left was also staying like her stuff was staying there like right. it was out of the way, but it was sort of there. Um, but I didn't really know what I was doing, making or anything like that. So it was it worked for me you know yeah like a place for me to go to leave my house so and you know and then when Diane and Danny decided to kind of team up and give me a show at the cabin which is Danny's space um it gave me a space to kind of create work there mm -hmm. yeah um We've established a lot. I, I have a lot of questions from the group and I think that a lot of them pertain to what you're talking about. So I'm just gonna start to 
ask these questions and I'll say the person's name if they're here. And if you would prefer to ask yourself, that's great, but I'm just gonna start asking. We've got um, Sonia's question. Is Sonia here? No. Okay. Um, she's, she's asking, what do you feel like LA has in terms of specific resources that they offer artists um, that they don't offer in other cities? Do you think that there's something, you know, special about what they have? Oh, she is here. Sorry, Sonia, but you can chime on in. Wait, where's Sonia? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, oh, great. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm calling in from Miami Beach. I'm not a student, but I'm uh, a collector of Genevieve's work, and I've followed her career for some time, and have absolutely enjoyed seeing her um, evolve as an artist. And um, I was very curious about her experience um, in LA and about how she has, what she finds it offers. I'm actually a New Yorker uh, who's now in Miami. So that's one of the reasons I think New Yorkers are curious and somewhat jealous of LA. So <laughs> I'd like to better understand, uh, uh, better understand what it um, offers to artists. And also uh, because she did her residency, did a residency here in Miami. And I'm, I'm also would love to know what she thinks the future offers to artists. Cause I certainly, now that I'm here, would love to uh, do what I can to, to support that. Cool. Um, thank you for collecting <laughs> and following the work. Um, let's see what, you know, it's hard for me to like tell you exactly like resources that LA has only because my path maybe didn't necessarily utilize a lot of things that are available in LA. Um, and maybe there's some folks in the house that are you know, from LA that could chime in on that later. Um, but it, it just has, I was going to say a warmth and that wasn't really intending <laughs> like <laughs> the weather, but like, I don't know. It's almost like, I just picture like a, a stadium with a ceiling and a, an open stadium. And I feel like LA is the open roof stadium and and I don't know if that's breathing room or what it is but um that that's like the analogy that I'm thinking of when um comparing the two places um and I I can only s like speculate about New York because I didn't go through it and I have friends that have and are doing it and are succeeding and other friends that are you know somewhere in between that so um i think i think that just knowing that there's all these different pockets like you can enter the art world from so many different angles in la at least that i think that i found out because again when i said you know you can go to an art show and then see someone else i could go you know i kind of maybe i started out going to shows in like the culver city area or like the West Hollywood area, but then I'd go downtown and I'd be like, who are these people? I didn't know these people were here. And like, it's a whole other kind of even vibe. And it's just interesting um, how it, it keeps um, unfolding new things that, that I'm sure New York offers as well, but I, I just don't know <laughs> how to speak on that. Um, but Miami, as a place I think is growing, it's growing its collector base. Um, it also, you know, it has some pretty well-known collectors there. Um, and I think Art Basel also makes a big splash and is bringing that energy um, to have more art programs and more artists moving there. And I'm not exactly sure about the galleries so much there, but, um, I definitely think that, you know, Fountainhead is a, is a cool stepping point to like connect with those people and, you know, a place if you want to get away from your every day and see what it's like to be in Miami. So, and I don't know how 
one gets that residency, I think they reach out to you, but I don't think it would hurt to also reach out to them. They're pretty, um, you know, open people. Thanks for your question, Sonia. Uh, we got another question. What, let's see, um, has the LA art scene or environment affected your practice? And if so, how? I mean, yes. All of it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, like I said, I don't, I probably just wouldn't make the art I make if I went there, if I didn't go there, you know? Right. Or it would have taken me a lot longer to get there. Um, and I can imagine it would be a lot different compared to like work I would have made if I first landed in New York, you know? Right. Um, but, you know, I kind of focusing on the photographs, I think that more does like tie to the location or the, the thing that I instantly noticed about LA is like, it's, it's hard to make a bad picture in terms of lighting um, when you're in LA. So um, that kind of, it was kind of like whatever time of day it was, I felt like, okay, I'm gonna, I gotta make some work now, so I will go out. It wasn't like, oh, it's a cloudy day, and <laughs> oh, it's right. a sunny day. Okay, I guess I have to make work again. Right. Uh, but um, I don't know if that's really answering it. But <laughs> uh, I see that um, Alexandra is here, and she had a question. Alexandra, shall I ask your question and then we'll unmute you if you want to talk? Cool, cool. Um, do you feel that working in LA potentially imposes or lifts any restrictions that you might, for, might, might face working elsewhere? I mean, these are kind of open-ended <laughs> questions. I mean, yes and no. Do you know I can't speak because I on it on it being another place because I haven't really done that you know I find myself back in Massachusetts now and you know if this wasn't like a time of COVID I still wouldn't be like popping out to a gallery or you know meeting up to socialize in that way um but I would have more time to kind of just um, take, take in my surroundings that I feed off of in my work in general, kind of, you know, just re I, I often say when I come back to Massachusetts, it's kind of a reboot, you know? Right. Because, you know, I, I speak highly of LA, but it's still, it's a lot, you know, it's a right. big city and it's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of movement and, um, there's a lot of things, there's a lot happening. So it's, you know, there's a lot of information going through. So sometimes just stepping out of that scene allows me to kind of pause and um, sift through all of that information. Right. And channel that through to the work. Um, and I've also mentioned, like, if I've ever felt stuck, um, you know, depending on what I'm going through in life, I've made it a point to, you know, go home to kind of recheck and be around the people that know me from, you know, day one. Yeah. I think that's an important part, uh, important, important point. I'm having a hard time talking today. Okay. I wanted to acknowledge that somebody wanted to add on to that question and you know who this person is. Joshua Ross, say hi. It's Genevieve. Hi, Genevieve. Genevieve. You know, Joshua. Hi, everyone. Hi, Genevieve. <laughs> Hi, Erica. Hey, I want, I want, um, I'm glad we get to talk to you. Um, <laughs> um, I'm curious, like, um, I think that question about how has um, LA impacted your question, I mean, impacted your sort of production um, lends itself to also, like, um, so you spoke a little bit about, you know, your sort of catalyst show with Diane Rosenstein. Mm -hmm. Um, and since then, like two sort of shows that stand out in my mind are the Shulamit Nazarian show, 
where you showed um, photographs. Um, and I think it was a group exhibition and then the um, Susan Bellmitter show where you had an installation and photographs. Um, can you share um, what, you know, how, you know, you decide, you know, how working with galleries um, sort of impacts the work that you show? Um, and if it is, I, I'm sure it does because, you know, you are showing with sort of certain artists and there's a specific space, but can you elaborate on, um, you know, how, about that process? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that I've always tried to make a point to not let the gallery sway me too much in what I create. Um, I've made a lot of things that at first I'm like, oh, I hope that this is well received or like at least, you know, evokes um, some sort of conversation around it. Um, and more in the positive sense or, you know, not just like, why the heck did you make this and we never want to see it again. Um, but I don't, you know, I'm trying to think of like with a group show, I think whenever I'm in a group show, I get, I think maybe it's a little bit of like the grad school vibes left over. Like I just was like, oh gosh, I have to like make that piece. Even if it's one piece, it has to like be stand out, you know? Mm -hmm. So like giving, giving it like a very all me basically feeling so that it stands out amongst the crowd, but it's still in conversation with whatever the theme of the show is. Um, and then, um, I don't think I've actually had a show that was just all photographs. <laughs> so, um, and I, you weren't here last time, but I was talking about how, you know, sometimes, especially for the, um, the Vilmitter show, it was kind of, it took a while for me to decide that I would incorporate a few photographs. Um, I think for me, sometimes it feels like I'm like hitting the same note. Um, although that's not the feedback I'm getting from the audience. So, you know, sometimes you have to listen to your audience in that sense. Um, but, and I, you know, if I had a few, um, folks that I kind of, I talked about last time, like a handful of folks that are like my inner circle that I trust to like show something I'm working on. Um, and it kind of was brought up like, oh, are you missing this one part of your conversation? Um, because the work has so many entry points that you don't want to leave out that one door that could, you know, start the, the conversation for that person, you know, yeah. but it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a dance to like figure out, um, you know, what, what works to really, I don't know, focus on, you know, I've kind of. I guess the Danny first show was the at the cabin LA, which was um, helped uh, or duly promoted by uh, Diane Rosenstein. She and him for that show, I, you know, I did have collage. I had the shoe, the early work, like the shoes that I did. Um, and it's funny when I look back at some of the install shots of these shows, I'm like, man, that was crazy. I can't believe they, we're into this, you know? Um, or it's nice to look back at old work and also just say like, wow, there has been growth. And it's also nice to look back and say, wow, it's nice when this work that I made really early on can still be seen and, you know, add to the conversation um, of, you know, the, the whole story of like my trajectory. But I don't think I'm really answering your question, but I'm I'm just giving you some of the kind of ways that I've, I don't, I guess I don't get bogged down by, I hope the gallery likes this. <laughs> Do you know, if the gallery is working with you, they probably already like your work. You might throw some curveballs in there that aren't, you know, the work they're used to seeing by you, but I think that keeps them on their toes 
um, and it just it keeps it keeps it interesting for you as the artist, you know. Yeah. When I, you're in grad school, like that's usually where you can kind of make the thing that you know if it sucks or if it you know is a number of things like you can have that safe space to have the dialogue around that but when you're out in the world as an artist you can ask your friends to a certain extent but when that work goes out in the world you're just like that's kind of the first um kind of word you're hearing about it and you're just hoping that wasn't the thing you should have done in grad school right you know right um we have a question from Rachel. 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 Hi. She is. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Genevieve. Hi, Hi. Erica. Um, I've been following uh, your work, Genevieve, for a little while. Um, I was told that you're very smart and, you know, looking at your work and hearing you like these past two weeks speak on it, it's really, really like, wow, <laughs> it's amazing. And it's really cool to see where you've come. So I just have a few questions. Um, um, my first being, do you ever feel like you need to keep up with the art scene in LA? <laughs> oh, should I ask them all at once? I'm not sure. Oh, no. <laughs> Girl, don't do that because I... That's a terrible idea. <laughs> no. I was just like, oh, great. We have a pause. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, because like... It's not even, also, it's not necessarily just keeping up with it in the sense of like, you have to be seen on the scene all the time. Although that is, I feel like part of it, but as your network grows, like your group of artist friends that you're just like, there's someone to support, you know, like, so even if you're having an off day, it's like, you got to put on that sparkly blazer and like show up like, you know, yeah. because they're doing that for you. Um, I would say more for me, there's always this feeling of having to reinvent myself in a way, which makes it harder. Cause it's like, you know, someone will be like, so are you doing an installation again? I heard you're having a show. Are you doing an installation again? You know, like, I'm just like, no, I'm not doing an installation because <laughs> mm. that's almost what you expect of me. So like, I, I pay attention to those kinds of things as well. I'm like, yes, there'll be a photo, but no installation. No. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, go on with your next question. <laughs> no, that was amazing. Thank you. Um, so my second question is, do you make projects for specific exhibitions or shows? Or is it sort of just like any project you come up with separately and it finds a home? Oh, with a show? that's a good question. Honestly, I've been really fortunate enough to have pretty consistent um, shows. Um, I don't want to say lined up, but kind of follow the next, if you will. And so in some ways, it's a blessing and others, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, you don't ever really have that pause to, you know, I don't know, like, I know, that, like those artists that have been like locked away in their studio for a year and they're just like oh this is what I've been working on and you're just like oh my god that's amazing and like I really don't have those moments and I maybe though I'm talking about it and I maybe dream of that I honestly work a lot better with deadlines and my studio manager will attest to that and you know it's just even if I you know I think I mentioned last conversation that I was really struggling with the work for freeze mm -hmm. but regardless I had to come up with something for that do you know so whether it took me you know a month before everything and I, that month before everything for me was still work even though there wasn't physically work being made but yeah I feel like it's all work <laughs> amazing thank you so much and um my last question, which I guess ties maybe a little bit into um, what you were saying about like freeze and sort, sort of, um, how do you know when a project is fully finished and ready to show? Like, how do you know when it's just like, bam, like this is done, done. Like, do you ever come back to it after that? Or is it just like, <laughs> see ya, like it's done. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's mostly like done, done. Freeze was a little different because I was a little... 
there were things in my studio that I had been looking at, you know, for those several months before and, and something, I think like when I had all those other works brewing and some of them were there, I could look at and like the whole message was like starting to speak to me more. I was just like, Oh, I, I need just like this one more piece, you know? And, mm. and I couldn't figure out, um, exactly what it was. And then I was like, Oh, it just has the wall. It just has the wrong wallpaper on it. It was a collage piece. Um, and so I was like, Oh, if I just change these two patterns, then, you know, it started to fall into place more. Mm. And so I literally carried that large piece into like install day. So the gallery hadn't seen it. Like I'm basically a gallery's worst nightmare. Like I <laughs> like, I am full of surprises, if you will. And so, you know, I was just like, oh, you guys can just put this in now, you know? And I was like, they're, and I don't even know if they're going to, you know, like it. And whether they like it or not is really not the biggest part of it. But um, will it, will it kind of be the thing? And then usually it's like, oh my gosh, this is like really what locked everything together. Mm. So that's when those moments happen, it's like, okay, this is, this is okay, you know? Yeah. Maybe not like okay to work like that. It's good to have a good work ethic, <laughs> you know, um, and find out like where your your weak points are and just start sharing those things up front with people. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I mentioned my studio manager, she will step in and, you know, just let folks know, don't worry, it's going to be there. <laughs> yeah. It's going to happen. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much, Genevieve. Of course. Thanks, Rachel. Okay. Um, I've got lots of other questions. Uh -oh. Daphne, Daphne is here. Daphne is always here. And she has a question. And let's talk to Daphne. Daphne's question, I'll just say it, and then you guys can talk. Okay. Um, what's the hardest part of navigating the LA art scene? Yeah, that's a good question. Daphne, do we know each other? I'm just <laughs> okay, I'm just like, now we do. <laughs> I, know, I saw you were like one of the first people that showed up and I was like, oh, good. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't think it's really specific to LA. It's just like, you have to be super confident in the work. You're going to kind of know if the work is ready to be out into the world in a way, I feel like. You know, you have to have those studio visits, you have to have those conversations prior, but that's something I think to really, to be like clear on your own message and your work and confident in that sense. Because I'm not confident about a lot of things, but most of the time I'm confident about my art. <laughs> most like, you know, 95% of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll go back to the first conversation, you know, the first series, when I remember this one grad student when I was in undergrad, and he was just like, if the work is good, like, don't worry about the other stuff. Like, just follow the people that are like, coming into your bubble that are going in the direction you want to go in. Do you know? That's that, so great. That's like navigating all of this because That's like navigating life yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> there's no rules like there's these underlying like hush hush rules that no one talks about so therefore there are no rules <laughs> wait wait tell us about this genevieve <laughs> <laughs> i love that <laughs> so yeah and you're an artist i am i work in food Wow, I'm like bringing the foodies out. I know it. That's amazing. I love it. It's a safe, it's a safe space to like, you know, feel creative and get a paycheck and, um, yeah. Well, if I spend money on materials, I get to consume them. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, did you say this to me the other in, in a DM? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> See, I do know you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Daphne, for coming every week. This girl is committed. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, what? 
Aaron, Aaron Adams, because there's a couple of Aaron. Aaron, <laughs> I think you two know each other, but I liked Aaron's question. She asked, how has your practice changed in the months that you have been on the East Coast? Well, hi, Aaron. Hey. Hey. Aaron is a dear friend. Also, another person that kind of appeared in my life, I would say after or around the CAM show. We m both met at my show at CAM and we kind of just connected. I don't know if we were at the show or if it was like the MLK day. I think it was a Mark Bradford talk and you were there at your show. Uh, yes. It was my birthday and Mark yeah, was the same time. I talk and I wandered into the space and went. <laughs> 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 Who is this? What's going on? What? What? But Erin is an amazing artist and she's helped me create some of my works. Like, I'm just like, okay, so I have this vision. Can you just like make this happen? <laughs> Cause I don't work with those materials. So how do, you know, so um, the universe definitely brought Erin into my life, which was a major thank you. That's and super you, kind you know, and like, vice versa. <laughs> Genevieve has introduced me to many, many people and I was a very, resistant um sort of like oh I, I i don't know about this art scene i'm just gonna keep making money and doing what i do as a contractor but genevieve just was like your work's great she kept coming for studio visits i kept going to her we just uh and she's really generous to to share where did that land you where are you now <laughs> <laughs> I'm in an MFA program right now at UC Santa Barbara, where Jenny's show was, but she, she was just like, hey, I'm coming in your neighborhood. I'm like, what? So, yeah, it's always been like a bunch of full circles all over and over and over again for it, just me learning so much from you. And, and yeah, I'm just sharing whatever I know, you know, more like you already were making it. I was just like, Oh, you can do this faster this way. You can do this better that way. You know, like just suggestions really. But I just wondered how, how things change for you on the flip side, like on the East Coast, because I'm so used to you being here and having this bigger space and having lots of room and like, how do you do it? I think, you know, I just recently, la the last time we all met up, um, I had moved up to the studio space. Um, that where Erica is right now and up in North Adams and so that was cool like I had more space so I could kind of lay everything out because I was a I was starting to feel like a little bit because I was I'm staying in a kind of in-laws suite kind of you know it's probably bigger than most like New York apartments so I shouldn't really complain <laughs> but I was feeling like a little bit bogged down I was like, oh, I'm just gonna make small works, but there wasn't a lot of wall space. And I like to, you know, I kind of like to wallpaper everything and just see it all up mm -hmm. and then start to, you know, pull things together. So it made it a little bit easier once I just like laid everything out. The only thing is like, I have to travel like an hour and a half to get there. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna be there less, but for longer periods of time. I guess it's kind of like the way I'm, you know, we're in LA now my studio is literally in my backyard and I can, and I have a ton of space. So, um, I can, like, I feed off of all of my stuff, just, um, the aesthetic of my space helps me, um, create my work. So even when I went up to the gal to the gallery or to the studio um in north adams i was just like okay i need to like set this up and try and like make a vibe so that i can feel like i can work in this space um which isn't hard you know but i'm definitely moving slower if that's possible i feel like <laughs> i mean i'm not i don't move slow i just like don't utilize all of what seems like available working time because i'm like in here creating a certain level of where things need to go um and for some artists that's different they literally have to be in the space you know 24 7 just like feeling the materials like painting whatever you know like and constantly like cutting 
for collage stuff too? I feel like that's, that's where you're creating as you're doing it, right? In yeah, a way? that is something I, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I've brought that up before, but I, I am kind of known for just bringing my cutouts along with me to, you know, social gatherings. <laughs> Mostly if I'm like feeling awkward, I'll be cutting out some roses. So it looks like I'm like, oh, wow, I'm, yeah, I'm really always working. <laughs> but I'm like, this is more because I'm socially awkward, <laughs> but I'm also getting work done. But <laughs> this is, oh, can I touch these materials? I'm like, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> funny. That's great. Yeah. All right. I'm glad you got a second spot and it's yeah, more room to spread out because I know you love that. Yeah, and like, you know, a lot of folks are asking about like what are you making work about in the this pandemic time or setting and it's like people are dying in the streets. They're dying in the hospital for like a legit reason. But like for absurd reasons, people are dying in the streets. And like, I don't, th I'm not even like, I can't even think about the pandemic because I'm thinking about that. And like, that's, those are the things that I'm passionate about um, addressing through my art. And that's kind of the only way that I feel like what I do makes sense. If I'm, if I'm speaking on that and affecting for a positive change. Thank you for that. Thanks, Erin. It's so, it's really great to hear and witness all the interaction with folks that you've met in your time from the beginning to now, Erin, uh, Joshua, Raylan here, North Adams, all these different people. It's really amazing, but I think the, the common thread, one thing, that I really feel is this genuine commitment to wanting to share that you have. Like you, you have such a, you always want to help and support others and whatever they're doing. I think it just collector forward. too. Don't forget, like you have to collect what you believe in too. So I like all, you know, every realm of the art world is amazing to me. So yeah, yeah, you love it if you can. Yeah, Aaron is collected both my and my roommate's work as well. Someday I will again, hopefully, <laughs> this <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> well, I think artists are each other's best supporters and patrons. No question, no doubt about that. Um, the, the other question um, I thought would be interesting uh, comes from Jeff, who is here, who has been with us the past three. Hey, Jeff. Um, I thought you might, if I can share your question, um, and I'm sure there's really no, like, one answer, Genevieve, but Jeff wants to know how much of your work is making art versus promoting your art versus selling your art? Mm. Or other things that I don't know about, because obviously <laughs> not, not profit world, not the art world. Yeah, so... I think I talked a little bit about that, like a lot of time, maybe when I haven't quite physically figured out how to make the thing in my head become a physical item or object, then um, I'm just, you know, in my head. So there's a lot of that time. Um, and I think for some people, how they navigate after they've created a body of work, yes, they show up to the opening, but I think they do have this sense of like, relief the work is done it's out in the world but I with my work for some reason it's like okay now a new version of work comes in so I have to you know um not that I have to I I want to also um but I want to have conversations with people that are are getting it are being affected by it um or I want to have conversations with people that don't get it or, you know, they're like, oh, this, this is making me think of this. And I'm like, oh, I really wanted to make you think of that. And, you know, kind of guiding them a little bit on that journey. Um, and then just, I guess it kind of turns into, you know, social media as being another platform to like promote things, which, you know, usually the gallery, um, is pretty on their toes about that kind of stuff. But I like 
being um, interactive with my social media. Some people have someone else completely control that. Um, but I really just, I like, like if someone has liked an image or something I've posted, then I'll try my best to click and see if I've not seen that person and then look on their page and I might not follow them back. And that's just because my thing is already like bombarded with follows. So I won't necessarily, but I'll, you know, maybe save something that, that, you know, or like something of theirs just so like they know that I'm, I'm engaged and I, I notice them noticing me and I appreciate them okay. taking the time. So it's like, there really isn't a stopping point really. Um, I think, you know, when people are like, so what are you doing for the weekend? And I'm thinking, I thought it was Monday, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't really feel like the time, like the, there isn't that kind of lifestyle for me per se, you know, um, like, but you're yeah. sort of involved with all of it. Cause like, I know some musician friends who will like, you know, they focus on the music and then they let the label do the promotion stuff and others who are like, no, I need to be part of all of it. Yeah. I'm a little bit, I got to be part of all of it. Like I have Aaron as an amazing buffer in between that. Like every email that she's sending out, most likely I've put my eyes on it, you know, but um, it just, it, it allows for there to be a little bit of, you know, separation from all that stuff but I'm fully I'm I'm that person I want I've at a certain point I've kind of like looked at what I have created for myself as far as being an artist as a business so like I'm a businesswoman I want to kind of know all the ins and outs of it and when I know part like if I know how things are going in that range or like in that particular area then I might you know fall back a little bit and be like, okay, seems like everything's chill on that. But it's like, if you don't show up for yourself sometimes, then there's no knowing where things could go. Um, and not, and not all artists want to be in that, in that, um, that mode of working and, you know, to each their own. I just want to like, really, like, I love, I love engaging with my collectors if they want to have that, you know? Um, and so like, even if I'm hanging out with, like I'll often get invited to like collectors houses and just hanging out cause they want to know more about my story. They want to know what it's like to be with the artist. And so like that also is work in a way, you know? And there's something that I've also really tuned into, especially when I'm in those environments, where there's, you know, I, often I'll be at a, at a collector's home and there's other artists and, you know, maybe people from other walks of life, but just a bunch of creatives, you know? And I think it's my MO to kind of, you know, pull out my cutouts if I feel kind of awkward, but I'm always listening. Do you know? I don't always have to have the clever thing to say or, you know, let you know what the hottest thing I'm working on is or whatever. But some serious knowledge gets drops, dropped in those environments. And so it's like you're constantly, you might not be physically working, but you're working in the sense that you have to, you know, the universe is giving you this information that you have to filter through. Sorry if that sounds hokey. That's just how I talk. And so, like, you... And like they could be talking to another artist like you have to know like when things aren't even being specifically directed at you you have to know that there's a little bit of there's a nugget in there for you that you can you know either say okay maybe i should you know look at my practice and you know how that affects what i do or oh oh that person's talking about a really bad experience i'm gonna note that you know i'm gonna maybe avoid that person that they're talking about because I, I've got other folks coming <laughs> through my, on my path that I'm going to have to, and so if I at least have a sense that, you know, that person might not be the best person to know, to like engage with, then you just keep those kind of, you're, you're constantly working is what I'm getting at, Jeff. <laughs> cool. Thanks. I totally appreciate your 
this whole thing. It's been really fun to hear. Yeah, thank you so Great. much for coming to this. Thanks, Jeff. Um, it, you know, I think a lot of it too, and I it, the reason why we wanted to have these series of conversations is I think it sounds like, you know, things change for artists, people in general, different stages. Maybe at some point something took more energy than it did now in your career. But um, I think that, that that's a really good thing too, to acknowledge that shift. And you always seem to talk a little bit about the flexibility, but always being aware of what you need to do to sustain your practice. Um, I, I often, I, I think I shared a story about your collaging. Somebody told me that they saw you at a party and you were collaging. So it is not a lie, people. It's real. She takes the collage work everywhere. And I think that's a great thing. But I also feel like there's a couple of different points in there where you talked about um, this network, how important the network is, whether it's artists, supporters, um, other artists, patrons, collectors, and um, also how you engage with them, that sometimes it is at a party, um, but you're always being introduced to other people that expand that and that that in and of itself is work. Uh, I think that's also something for a lot of artists to acknowledge and learn. But when you think about LA and having moved there, a question I have for you is, um, you know, what do you, what have you most valued about your experience in LA, the art scene, and I'm gonna start with people. Like, for instance, Hao Nguyen. Would you say that he's been a really integral person? Hi, Hao! <laughs> oh, Hao is muted. Hao's <laughs> muted. We have to unmute Hao. <laughs> oh my god. On? Let's see. Hao. There he is. Jason, oh, how are you? God. Jason Lam is in the house. <laughs> I miss you so much. Can we come back to the West Coast? Yeah. As soon as I get my own jet. <laughs> I'll send you mine. Oh, right. I forgot you. I one. forgot, yeah. Oh, yep. uh, you look great. Well, guess what? We're wearing pink. Oh, we got the memo. Yeah, got <laughs> that is amazing. How did that happen? It was meant to be. We're very in tune, yeah. We yeah. yeah. are. <laughs> well, we just thought it would be really, you know, I think that I'm sure you would agree that Howe has played a really valuable, important, integral role. I know that you have a really special relationship, so we thought it would be nice to have. Oh, Thank you so much for being here with us, Hal. We really appreciate it. Of course. It. I, was so, I was so nervous to be on. It's like, oh my God. It's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> We're all friends. Because Genevieve, yeah. Genevieve knows that I'm just like the background person. Don't like being, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So how and I make a point to call each other. Like I go pretty, like now that how is in my life, how and Arthur in my lives, how is like my person that I show up fashionably late or early, depending on what place we have to go and you know we we help each other with our looks and he's just like the person I can literally be foolish with I can call crying a mess and this is one of my collectors you know like you have to know like which people you can really show yourself to and which people you know this is still a professional relationship and though I do really respect how in the sense of the professional side of things um he's really become family you know so yeah uh oh i feel i feel the same way about you absolutely <laughs> oh my god so how did how did the your face how did the two of you meet how did um action happen? let me tell let me tell oh, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh Okay, oh so God. this is like a whole, like, this is kind of like from day one, um, when Ray, Anthony Barrett, my first, like, art friend in LA, okay. I remember he was like, oh, let's go to this, um, this New Year's Eve party. And I was like, 
okay, cool. And it was at this big house. It happened to be in the neighborhood that Hal and Arthur live in. I didn't know that area. And so I was just like, okay, I'm just following along. And at one point Ray said, Hey, do you, do you want to go to this collector's house? Like they live right up the street. Um, it'll be really cool. So I went to their house and I was blown away. I was just like, what is all this art on the wall? Like, I can't believe I'm seeing like people live with art. Like that was, you know, Danny lives with some pretty crazy art. Like he has like giant Kahindes. Like, so he wasn't like, how and Arthur weren't the first house that I saw like people living with their art like that, but living with just like, I don't know. It's just like a sense of style and just like my new heroes, like people that I was being introduced to their work later in, you know, in my kind of understanding my own art. And so to go to their house and just like, again, super quiet, you know, Ray might've said I was an artist and it was like, Oh, cute. Haha. <laughs> Who isn't in this town? <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, and so like that, you know, I don't, you know, it was a nice night. I vaguely remember, you know, you pouring some champagne or something like that. <laughs> I was just like, this is so fancy. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> and then, um, yeah. And that was it. I never, you know, who knows how much time went by. Then there was another event a year or so later at the mistake. Was it really a year? I think it was. Cause wow. that was the first year. It might've been two years because that was the first year I was in LA that I like, we stopped by your house then. And so, and he was probably like, who is this white woman? I'm sure. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Love uh, the honesty. That's <laughs> <laughs> very honest. Very upfront. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. So the, the second time what I saw how and Arthur show up to this um, fundraising event, art auction. I had a piece in the auction and... I can't remember if, you know, either my gallerist at the time or something was like, oh, that's, you know, such and such. And maybe you should go say hi to them, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, okay. And I remember, I don't know if I talked to you or Arthur, but it was very dismissive. Like, oh, hi. Yeah. Uh-huh. Bye. I and think you talked to Arthur because I'm very standoffish and quiet as well. So yeah, I've noticed you. That night. What's that? We're looking flashy that night. I know, but I I did notice you. That's like, who's this? What? Oh, sh oh my goodness! <laughs> it's Arthur trying to call me. Oh, <laughs> he wants to be in this. No, he's in the other room with Zoom, and I guess I'm being too loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I saw you from a distance at the mistake room. It's like, who's this white girl with this curly hair? She's just like, kind of like. You know, by herself, it's just like, oh, she, 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 I think she needs a friend. <laughs> I was like, oh, remember? I don't remember what you were. Saying. <laughs> I weren't my friend yet. I love it. So that happened. You know, I, you know, I just kind of said hello to them, and then that was it. Again, just a lot of observing, like who are they with, what are they doing, blah blah blah, taking it, taking it all in, and then. I had my first solo show or second solo show at Shulamit Nazarian. It was the, um, you can, you can use yours if you want to, how? What? You I'm good. If you have to. Um, this is a really strange story. This is how I'm talking about the universe being crazy. Okay. So I had just prior to, the show opening, I had filmed a Vice News interview and they kind of looked at my studio and whatever and my practice. And so that had aired. I'm waiting. I, so my mom had flown to LA to go to the opening. Her and I are waiting on the corner of the street for our Uber. This uh, black Land Rover is slowly driving down the street and and like, granted, I had put a wig on and a turban, like I had like a whole look. And this person was like, 
are you that girl <laughs> from Vice News? And I'm just like, what? Like, that's weird. Like, I don't, I don't know if I look like the way I look, you know, I don't know how she happened to say that. And I was just like, yeah. I was like, are you my Uber driver? And she's like, girl, no. And I was like, sorry. Although her name was the same name as the driver. D they both were named Dion. One was a guy, one was a girl. <laughs> and I was just like, what? This is like, what? anyway. So yes, I'm that girl. I'm actually going to my opening. Come by the opening. We'll see you there. He comes by the opening. There's, you know, we get to know each other a little bit more at the opening. Um, and something crazy, like we have the same birthday. She's a, she's a bit older than me, but it was just like all these really strange connections. So I don't know, a week after the show had opened, she had reached out and was like, cause we bonded. So I was like, okay, let's hang out. And so we grabbed dinner and we're at dinner. She gets a phone call and she's saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sure. I can come over, but can I bring a friend? I, you know? And I was like, okay, kid you not. We drive to how and Arthur's house. And Small just, well. this, so this woman was friends with how and Arthur. And so I was just like, I'm meant to be here. I, they open the door and they're like, we're literally looking at your, um, list of art because we're going to an event at the gallery i don't know if it was the following day or a couple days later um to to see your work and i remember there was a piece in that show that i uh, i remember as something that the gallery kind of dissuaded me they you know they weren't like don't do that they were kind of like i don't know who's gonna buy that thing how and arthur bought that thing it was a grandfather clock pink with one of my figurines in it and they took out their linen closet put a glass door over it wallpapered the interior and just like did the whole thing so like they are committed to living with the art straight up amazing <laughs> that's crazy i could just oh, I... listen to your stories all day sorry that was like really long <laughs> Um, you know, when obviously, you know, as I said, you have an amazing connection relationship, but I think, you know, Genevieve, we've had this conversation and I've had the conversation with other artists about the difference between a patron and a collector sometimes, especially within the art world now, and that it is not just about supporting an artist is not just about purchasing their work, but it's supporting their practice. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it is tunnel vision in that way. And I think that this is a wonderful example of that. Um, I think Howe is very modest in how he supports so many different artists, he and Arthur and what they do. And it isn't just about uh, the purchase of the work, but it's about helping artists to find their way, network, all those great things, all of the things that help them to make it to the place that they deserve to be, that their work warrants. Um, and I think that's, that's the best that we can ask for. So could I, could I ask each of you, I think maybe Genevieve and then how, how, you, how you see within the art world now, um, do you see that that is the case? Is there, do you see that, um, or where there are even spaces that we could improve upon or how, but that these are, and that wasn't a pun, I meant how, not how, but that you <laughs> actually, that, no. you, <laughs> that you are, that what it means to support an artist. What does that actually mean when you think about that? How you as a artist, what that means to you and maybe why you do that? And then Genevieve, kind of that for you. But how, what, how does, how is what you're doing motivate you and what, what is the bigger picture beyond just purchasing the work? Wow. You know, purchase, um, I've always loved art. I love things that are beautiful and just what we do, what I do, what Arthur would do is just support the artists by collecting artists. And then we give the artists our numbers, our emails, our texts and DM me. <laughs> it's like any question that you any question you have you know just ask you know just like don't be afraid like be vulnerable i'm always telling Jennifer, be, be vulnerable if you need to cry cry you know it's just like it's like we're all human we all bleed we all hurt you know so um that's 
that's what that's that's my relationship with Genevieve, and I feel like I have a similar relationship with all artists. I think it's just being genuine, just being there to support, to love, you know, to nurture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I think that's. I mean, that's really evident. But I think the idea that there probably for a lot of artists who are watching or or listening are would be rather intimidated. I think Genevieve's kind of experience is so that they're probably very afraid to talk to collectors or to put themselves out there. And I think that it's great that you say that because it is just a connection. There may be a connection, there may not be, but I think it's, it's taking advantage of the opportunity when it presents itself is really what we're talking about. I also love the fact that, 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 that Jen is so like down to earth and so humble about her work, but she's uh, like, I get so intimidated like going to art, art, art shows and like having the artists talk to me like saying me and they use all these big jargon. It's like, oh my God, what does that mean? You know, it's like, <laughs> I'm like, Jen's like, okay, break it down for me. Break it down. What does that mean? You know? <laughs> so, I love it. That's so refreshing to hear. Like, Those artists feel like they have to do that to impress you. That's great. Don't. Don't. <laughs> Please don't. Especially with me. <laughs> I love it. A few, a few collectors of mine that are here and, um, you know, some that I may not have a relationship with, but um, some that I've actually, you know, had conversations with and I get excited when I see them. And, you know, it's it's nice having a connection to people um, that live with your work so that you kind of, I mean, this can't happen for every piece, but it's just nice knowing that your work is like in a space with people that live with it, cherish it every day. They want to, you know, they want to um, share the story with other people and expand on it as they, you know, come back to collect more. Um, And that's really, you know, how kind of underplays himself as well. Like he, of the Arthur Howe duo, he is kind of the, the guy that you can go to just to, you know, like he kind of said, just to be vulnerable and real. And, um, and I, I was thinking about something when you were talking about just some good advice that you guys have given me something that you guys often remind me. Um, it started off as stay in your lane, do you know, in your lane. Mm-hmm. um, yeah. know like what, is in your toolbox and just like you don't have to keep you know doing all this extra stuff and and don't think that the the tools in your box aren't enough you know like yeah you can expand and bring new things in but like um just remember like the language that you've created within that that set of tools that you have and um don't take it for granted just you know just uh you can flip it upside down and use it a different way mm-hmm. to just you know yeah as long as as long as there's an essence of your work genevieve because i think it's we're always just like hey explore explore try something new but make sure that there's there's an there there's a there there's a, a genevieve essence in there don't, mm-hmm. like don't lose your you know what don't lose what you're known for do they have that in like a shaker i can just spray <laughs> <Yeah. on? laughs> <laughs> I got you in crystal. <laughs> <laughs> that will work. That, that will work. work, right? Yeah, that will work. So, the uh, how what what drew you and Arthur most to Genevieve's work? What is it that made you aside from meeting the lovely person that she is? What drew you to her work when you saw it? You know, Erica, to be honest, I wasn't I was never really interested in her work. Oh. Arthur. <laughs> and Arthur's like, um, there's this girl I want to go see at, Sh- at Shula, blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay. And then he's like, I want to buy that clock. It's like, why? We don't have no space for that. It's like, really? Are you kidding me? It's like, it's going to be like hanging out in the wall somewhere. It's like, <laughs> I love it. oh my and God. then, and then, but like, building this relationship with the artist and like getting to know her practice and she'll explain to me what she's thinking her process i'm like looking at the collages and it's like oh okay so she's teaching me you know she's sharing me her narratives like oh i get it 
yeah. you know. I, and then and then I started to appreciate, you know, her language and all that. <laughs> And, and now I love it. <laughs> now I love it. There was, was nothing. Sal has a really good eye. I mean, now that I've developed it for him. <laughs> I'm joking. This is well, why I, I Well, I taught her about proportion, too. <laughs> he also <laughs> my hair good. Um, anyway, sorry, we're going into too much. But this is funny. I think it's it's key for for artists that are you know just trying to get their foot in the door you don't always have to have the gallery representation to you know to get noticed or to get your work purchased by somebody and there's a lot of collectors out there scouring the internet and social media or instagram and they're looking for what they're drawn to and a lot of collectors want are want, are willing to take the risk of um, collecting your work early and um, you know helping you expand on that and they're they're gonna share your story through the work they buy so be open to that as being a potential way to get you know I I talk to younger artists who don't have representation yet and often I'll say oh my gosh, I wish I had that period of time when I could have sold out of my gallery or out of my studio directly, you know? Uh, and that probably does get tricky in a lot of ways, depending on the scale of your work and, you know, um, how good your communication skills are. But, um, you know, not that the gallery doesn't, um, you know, do their part and take care of a lot of things, but... Um, when you work with a gallery, you're, you're giving a percentage of, um, what your, the cost of your work is. So nice. you, you have to remember that, you know, if you have that kind of sweet spot where you can sell directly to collectors that are interested in your work, then, um, take advantage of that. And, you know, they're, they're just another like stepping point to the gallery because, they, the galleries want to know who they're collecting and things like that. So it's a, and they're going to share with other collectors that they're interested in, like showing what they're interested in. So, right. and how, um, how and Arthur are, um, one of those, um, collector duos that, you know, people want to see what they're, what they, what they're interested in because they have, they have each their own, a unique eye and, they might have to sell each other on the thing. And, you know, there's probably things that they don't always agree with, but they're living with it and they grow with it. And, and I get to, like, <laughs> I'm not trying. He was joking kind of, but like, there is probably, you know, on a more serious note, there's truth to that. You know, not everyone's, I think some collector collectors who have partners, they will, discuss okay nothing comes in the house that we don't agree on but i also know that how has a secret stash of things that come into that house that <laughs> i do Arthur might not know exist until <laughs> oh that old thing that's been there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so. i get i get it shipped to the salon first of all <laughs> <laughs> i love it the secrets, oh, the secrets. <laughs> so um how Obviously, it sounds like we know that you've given some great advice to Genevieve and I'm sure other artists, but being, being a patron yourself, what I'm sure probably a lot of people who want to start to collect or think about it, what advice do you give to them when they want to have a collection one day that looks like yours or wants to start? What do, what do you say to them? Um, I just will tell... You know, when, when Arthur and I started out collecting, we didn't have a relationship with any galleries. So we would, you know, get passed pass on by so many, oh, there's nothing available, there's nothing available. So I think with the world of, of the internet and IG and everything, it's like, you know, I, I would say reach out to the artists, DM them, but also we reach out to them, but be respectful of them be respectful of the artist you know it's like don't be like you know like trying to be like 
manhandle the artist and all that. So when I reach out to artists, I would just say, hey, I love your work, blah, blah, blah. Is there anything you have available? Do you have a gallery? Can I buy directly from you? I keep it so real. And then I say, and then also it's like, if you don't have the money up front, hey, can I take five payments? Can I take three payments? You know, be honest. I think when you are honest and you're real with the, um, with the artists, they can feel it. Yeah. And, and then they'll share your names around and say, hey, this is a really good collector. You know, he reached out to me. You might want to DM him and all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's how I go about. I, I go around it. Yeah, and well, then I'll pass work on. Until you get the last payment, though. What's that? Don't send that work until you get the last. Payment. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Take that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, but I think that that is really. I think that's really good advice. Um, I also think that again, what you're talking about is that transparency that doesn't always exist because people are afraid to ask the question. Yeah be offended if I say, can I pay in installments? Oh, he doesn't want to talk to me. He's a big time collector or, you know, all these things, all of these ideas that people have in their mind about how to create these relationships that are dead in their tracks when there could have been an opportunity. So I think that that's, that's super important. Um, we've got, oh, hi, we've got lots of people still joining and we only have about a little less than 10 minutes. So if there's anyone that has any other questions that they, they want to ask or any comments you want to share, or if you want to share too what drew you to Genevieve's art, um, this, is our, this is our last one, folks. I mean, for a little bit, but you know. This is it. You'll never see me again. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to build it up here, Genevieve. Just let me do this. I thought you so, better yes. unmute yourself. Anybody else? <laughs> Anyone? Because I'm going to start asking questions again. Um, I have a question here from Laura, and I'm particularly interested in it. I think just because the question is, is Laura here, by the way? Laura, do you want to answer, the, answer this question? I didn't ask it. Laura wants to know how your current residency is impacting your work. Oh, I feel, oh, oh, hey, girl. <laughs> I was like, I see her name. Hi, Are Laura. You Can we unmute Laura? <laughs> Let's see. Laura Johnston. Here she comes. She unmuted. Okay, there we are. Hi, Hi Laura. Hi. Happy it's to see you. It's been a minute since Santa Barbara. I sure has. <laughs> Just in uh, roaming amongst your works uh, yesterday with great delight to uh, reacquaint yeah, myself with them. After getting like random text messages of people in the show. Yeah. I'm like, oh, people are still getting to see it. That's great. <laughs> a, little, a little on the fly. You know, we get just the right permission and sneak in the back door. Perfect. I'm sure you know a guy who knows a guy. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> I see those guys right on here too. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, artwork after all. <laughs> yes. So, what was your question? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't recall because I typed it in a week ago. So. Oh, yeah. Now Laura wants to know how your residency is impacting your work. Your residency. My residency is impacting. Yes, my work. Yes. No, I know. It's these experiences. Like this. This is my residency. You guys are in it with me right now so it's like it's kind of um it's reassuring it's motivating it's it's amazing to like have this clear visual understanding although we're all apart from each other like there are people showing up people are interested whether i've met you or not um there's definitely people from the la that are familiar faces um fellow artists um, and it's, you know, some people are saying they're zoomed out, but I need, I've been needing these, you know, these hangouts, these, um, moments to share because it just gives you clarity. You know, you just know that what, what you're doing is meaningful. It's impacting people and people want to engage with it and have the conversations around it. So 
that's huge. You know, this, this, the show in Santa Barbara got, you know, paused at a strange time. Um, but it's, it's going to have its moment again. And, um, I look forward to being back there with you guys and oh, can't wait. You know? So I guess that's really the the best way I could answer that. I just wish all of my Zoom calls are as entertaining as this. <laughs> <laughs> I want a whole lot of Zoom calls and many of them are are tedious, but this is a delight. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Um, anyone out I'm sorry, I'm I'm stepping in as MC of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anyone here that I've given a critique before? Anyone? <laughs> What's up? Unmute. <laughs> Someone let her unmute, please. <laughs> Where is she? I know. Can I have the name? Oh, Tania? Oh, okay. Tania, I'll take that. <laughs> and we've got a couple more questions, so okay. hold on, everybody. We're gonna okay, I think we're, we're set. Your voice and say, say hi, you know. Hi. <laughs> yeah, it's Tanya. It's Tanya. Tanya. Yes. So, Tanya and I met a long time ago, it feels like. At, you came to California College of the Arts. And right. myself and three other colleagues like hung out with you the whole time. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. I was just yeah. like, I want to hang out with these guys all the time. Fabulous artist. I'm wondering what you're doing. Are you, do you have a studio? Are you still creating? Because you made some pretty large work. Yeah. Um, so I just, during when Rona hit, I was in California. I'm in Chicago right now. I was, um, so the two other people I've mentioned, Troy and Kiru, yep. we had a, a residency that got cut oh, short wow. okay. yeah. um, in San Francisco. And I left and I came to my parents. And But I live in New York, so I'm heading back there in a week. And, and I was supposed to be setting up in a studio um, when I got back, but that's now on hold too. Um, yeah, so, but I, but for the most part, I, I can work from home. Um, but yeah, I'm, I was, I'm not making large, large work as I was when we met. Yeah. Well, I'm just, I wanted to shout out to you because I feel like people should follow you. There's some collectors in here, just like keep their eyes on you. And because I know Thank you're doing you. big things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I love it. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to. He's paying it forward. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Paying it forward. Thank you, Tanya. Um, we have two more questions. I want to get into Genevieve. One is, um, I'm sorry if I'm going to butcher your name. Sazio, Saziso. Is that right? Can we unmute you? Hello. Hi. Hello. Do you have a question for Genevieve? Yeah, well, it was more of a comment. Um, I mean, it was more of a comment for Genevieve and to yourself as well, Erica. Um, yeah. I just want yeah. to thank you so much for um, putting on these talks, um, these sessions. Um, yeah. I found them really helpful. And I'm kind of sad that this is the last one because I feel like there's been a bit of a community like every Wednesday, like with us all kind of here together and learning. and. I mean, I came to know about um, Genevieve's work through Instagram. Um, and um, to be honest, I didn't know much about Genevieve. Um, so this um, series has been really good in terms of learning more about her work. And I have like a newfound appreciation for her work. I always feel like when I learn about the artists and kind of like a lot of the things that we don't really know from kind of like face value or on the surface, um, it does give like a really, um, gives like a, you know, an, an extra appreciation for the work. So I just wanted to say thank you very much for, um, for these, for this series. Um, and I look forward to seeing more of Genevieve's work. And another thing is that these have been great because I think like Genevieve said, like, I think it's really important to have like, 
you know, these calls and these chats. And I think a lot of things that I've attended on Zoom have been quite tiring or been a bit too formal. And this has just been really nice and relaxed as well. Um, and so, yes, I'm just really grateful for that. And yeah, it's been amazing. And this is something that I wouldn't have attended, you know, had this pandemic happened. I'm not saying it's a good thing that it's happened, but this is kind of... <laughs> I'm thousands of miles away um so it's actually great to engage in this way um you know with something that I probably wouldn't have been able to engage with in real life so thank you very much oh my gosh thank, thank you. you oh my god I could just listen to you all day yeah. I love it and we're not we're not totally done are we Genevieve we've still got stuff up our sleeve so you do I don't know if this crowd's into it but you know yeah not this meet anyone that's right. Um, I want to get to, I love the images. Let me just make sure that we get our question in. Um, Daphne, Veronica, with you. Um, I guess that, I, I think that was it. Is there anyone whose question I may have missed? Perla, no, Perla asked about, Tanya, people want your Instagram handle, so she sees <laughs> that's good um any other left for us i'm just going through my slideshow because i never ended up showing it but i was like i really felt like this was a solid one so i'm gonna show you yeah please do. <laughs> this is a perfect way please you forgot my work to send this out um and just so many people that just really adore you. Joshua, Joshua Ross, thank you for coming and hanging out. And I just want to like welcome people to, you know, DM me if they have more questions. I'm not always the best at responding right away. So you can bug me if I didn't respond right away. Um, and I don't have all the answers. That was not the LA art scene in any way. <laughs> Form. That was how I kind of made sense of it all, I guess. Right, right. Oh, well, I, I definitely want to, I definitely want to thank Hal for coming and sharing all these tidbits of knowledge. I hope everybody was listening. Yeah. And we're just so pleased. I know you're a super busy person, so we totally appreciate you being here. It's been such a pleasure. And of course, there are lots of other people, Aaron Thompson, Veronica Preciado, for helping us out. But most importantly, for all of you that have come here for the first time and those of you that have come here all three sessions, thank you so much. And, you know, again, we really, we really are so grateful to have Genevieve here and share with us all of the wonderful people that have been a part of her life and her success and hopefully that um, goes on to everyone else and it just keeps flowing. So, um, and Raylan, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. unmute Raylan. Get unmute Raylan. Come on. I haven't seen this girl in like over 60 days. Oh, oh no. My seven year old misses you. Oh, I miss Sterling so much. Oh, Sterling. <laughs> I wanted to come to the last two, but I'm in Houston now, so I had some Zoom meetings conflicting with the four o'clock central time, five o'clock mm. time, so I'm so happy I got to catch the last one. We are too. Nice to see your smiling. You should follow Raylan too, because she's like an amazing oh. <laughs> yes. Call her the director. She's going to be directing some institution, y'all, so you should. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I really appreciate actually hearing um, from how, I know this is kind of a off topic, but I'm super, super interested in being kind of a philanthropist and working my way to support artists. My brother is studying to be an artist now. So being able to be on the other side um, of art and being able to support people that are so important in my life was really, really encouraging to hear, you know, how to start that side of, um, you know, being in the art scene. So that was a really great tidbit. Yeah, so good, so cool. I can't wait for you to come back and visit us. I don't care where you are. But me too, me too. That one, photographs in the background? Michael. Sorry? Sorry. I feel like one of my collectors in here and I can see artwork in the background. Who? Yeah. 
Oh. Very <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Trailblazer. Trailblazer coming in hot. All right. We love it. <laughs> yeah. That's that's awesome. That is so amazing. Genevieve, I've I've loved your work, of course. Um, I, I'm sure most collectors here and, and people in general who love the arts, um, you see an artist's work that you're blown away by. And I remember walking into spring break, um, I think it was probably 2016 when you, you did the, the full room and walking in and just being blown away by your work. And um, I, I'd say for, you know, young collectors out there, you know, it's, save little by little, you know, and, you know, until you have enough money to buy the work uh, by the artists that you really love. And that's what me and, and my fiance Liz did. Um, and we, we still do, you know, saving little by little um, to support those artists like Genevieve, who, you know, whose work is just so phenomenal. Um, and it's so great to have you here and, and talking about your work and, and LA as well, you know. Even though we're in New York, uh, I, <laughs> one day we'll be there. <laughs> well, it's great to see you in these chats. Cause you've shown up a few times, so thank you for your continued support. You've always got to support the artists you believe in, for sure. It's funny, I was thinking, I, I know I'm like going over the time limit now, but I think some collectors have that similar, like intimidated by the artist thing. So they won't even go up to the artist. So not like, don't always assume that a collector is so whatever that they're, they're not talking to you because they're whoever, but they might just not be coming up to you because they're like, you're the artist. And I'm kind of, you know, not you, obviously we've talked, but, <laughs> but just thinking of a, another perspective in the sense of like a uh, collector starting out and, um, yeah, knowing that artists do appreciate that little bit of reach out and engaging with them, you know? True. That's that true. Was Thank you. Um, we have gone a little bit over, although based on these comments, I don't think anybody minds that we have, but we'll start to shut it down. Genevieve, do all your shout outs, whatever you need to do. I, you did. I, am, I am a little disappointed that you're not in the car this week to kind of just but that's okay. The bed will end up there again eventually. Yeah. And, um, and then maybe you could do a little dance to play some music for us. But I want to say, again, thanks to everybody. But we will be continuing sessions with Genevieve, probably on different topics. Uh, we've got a lot going on here in North Adams that she's preparing for a show, um, a big event in August that we hope we'll be able to do in person. Uh, if not, we'll experience it virtually, but we'll definitely keep you updated. So I invite all of you to follow Gallery 51 um, on Instagram because that's where we post everything. We'll also be sending out you know, information on other forms of social media, but most importantly, welcome to all of this. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you, Genevieve. Thank you, Howe, again. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Aaron. Thank all of you for being here. Thank you for that emoji. I appreciate that. All of you, I really, I really do. Um, yes, that's so good. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Wait. Yes. Okay, I'm going to mute myself now. Can you put your follow information in the thing? And if you're an artist and I haven't called you out, please put your contact or your, your Instagram on there and we can follow folks or whoever you are. If you want to be followed, put your information there. Yes. Yes. Um, so again, everybody stay well, stay safe. I hate goodbyes. I know, keep in touch. Remember, we're all virtual besties in some form or fashion, and we will all come back together. We invite you to do that. But most importantly, thank you for supporting artists. Thank you support, for supporting Genevieve, and thank you for supporting the arts. That's what's most important. So, thanks, everybody. Well.